Every Friday night, Graham Norton charms UK audiences with Britain's version of the late night talk show. His sharp comedic timing, unique laugh, and effortless ease with guests who chat with him over drinks on his famous red sofa have made the Graham Norton show a huge success. Many also watch the show online, where some clips have gotten more than 20 million views on YouTube. Norton, an eight-time BAFTA award winner, also hosts a radio show, and he found time to write his third novel, Home Stretch, which goes on sale in the U.S. tomorrow. We spoke to him about that and his TV show. And we've got a picture of you at the Emmys. You are uh, so provocative, Graham. <laughs> I've told some shockers on the show before. Come on, Jamie, I come on. Up. And she went like this. By the way, this is the best time I've ever had on the talk show. The unexpected often happens on The Graham Norton Show. Oh! <gasps> oh, my God! <laughs> Did you just drink the fly? I think it's that thing that no matter how much planning you put into it, now how much production and prep, on the night, you are not sure what you're going to get. You've never been to a nightclub? Yes, you have! I yeah. bumped into you Will in you? heaven. Oh. Oh, yes. <laughs> the world's biggest stars are drawn to Norton's famous couch. But I feel, though, Colin, sometimes you... I feel, too. It's very high status. Your name is over the door. You walk out at the beginning, the audience go, yay. You feel great. Aren't I fabulous? But the minute the guests come out, then you've got to be low status. Your job at that point is to make the other people look good. And if you find... You're talking too much. You know something's gone horribly wrong. It's a chat show, <laughs> not a whispering show. It's gone right for the Irishman for 23 years now. But the TV host also has an unexpected side as an author. I think a lot of people would expect that if you wrote a novel, it would be set in some sort of glitzy London world. But your books are set in very quaint towns in, in Ireland. Well, because that's where I grew up. Home Stretch, Norton's third novel, is about an Irish boy who survives a car crash that kills three friends. The young man ultimately leaves Ireland, just as Norton did, and later returns to a changed country. I think it's the first country in the world where gay marriage was brought in through a popular vote, through a referendum. Yeah. That blows my mind. If you told the me leaving Ireland in 1984, that that would happen. I would have just thought, no, that's science fiction. You pay tribute at the end of your book to all the people who stayed and fought for that change. I did because, uh, because there is a kind of guilt when I go back and reap the benefits. You know, I'm swanning around going, I mean, not that I am getting married, but I could. <laughs> Norton wandered far after leaving his home country. You ended up at one point at a commune in San Francisco? I've lived, Anthony, I've lived, yes. <laughs> but in 1989, Norton nearly died after he was stabbed during a mugging in West London. I lost half my blood. I was in hospital for a few weeks. And it's only looking back now that I realize how traumatic it was. Yeah. I can imagine how that would stay with you for a long, long time. And in a way, it made me fearless. It made me make braver decisions, I think. Yeah. In that, what's the worst that could happen? Well, that's the worst that could happen. So everything else is sort of, you know, if you do a show and it bombs or you get terrible reviews for a book, well, not dead. There's something about being gay. Oh, it's just a bit common now, isn't it? <laughs> Norton first got noticed as a rather raunchy stand-up comedian. In fairness, I'm not that hot. And yet, Jason, I might be later. I was never very good. I was okay, I could make a living, but I wasn't a closer. So the minute I got some radio and TV gigs and could get out of there, I did. Along with his long-running talk show, Norton also loves being Britain's host of the Eurovision Song Contest, the world's biggest live music event. And this year, I think people really embraced it. And it is the stupidest show on earth. If people haven't seen it, I can't describe it to them because it's so Billy Bonkers. But being an author is Graham Norton's great escape. This is what homecoming meant. Arriving in a place to discover you're fluent in a language you'd forgotten you ever knew. I get the sense you'll, you'll keep writing 
long as you can do it. I do hope so. It's this lovely refuge. It's just me. I'm alone. And I really like that. Having said that, I'm supposed to be writing book four now. I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> What a hoot of a guy. Yeah, you know, it's so interesting because part of the reason he loves writing is he kind of doesn't have to be the Graham Norton everybody knows. Yeah. And he can go off into that space and he said, I kind of, you know, I didn't want to be people to be thinking about Graham Norton while they start reading this book. Yeah. So he sets them in these very quiet places in Ireland. The first couple were mysteries. This is, this is a, just a pure novel. And I assume book four is going to be fiction as well, but based on his answers to your questions, I'd read a memoir. When he yeah, said, he did, I yeah. lived. Yeah. Yeah. He did. He I've started. Lived. He did. He's done a memoir in England. I don't know if it came out here, but that's what got him the fiction deal. He said, basically, I was like, I told him, you want my memoir? Fine. you got to take my novel, too. You have, I have discovered someone new. I mean, and I love the premise of his show. He has such a huge oh. cast of characters yeah, the best, on the couch. He gets the best guests in Britain. I mean, What it, a mix. Yeah, all from all over the world. I so fun. He's I, got various ideas on what the, the key is to a great interview. I do think alcohol helps. Yes, Ooh, absolutely. A little bit. Who knew? A little bit.